recording, right? Okay. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Town Dyke Board of Health regular meeting. We're at Old Town Hall, 1111 Somerset Avenue. Today is Thursday, February 10th, 2022. Uh, this is a remote participation Zoom meeting. Also a public meeting being recorded for our cable broadcasts and internet posting on www.dighton.com dash mass.gov and YouTube. Zoom meeting number is 859-9568-6033. Zoom meeting passcode 562-169. Zoom dial-in number is 1929-205-6033. It's 6.02 p.m. We'll call the meeting to order. And would everyone mind, uh, not mind, standing for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, everybody. Um... I guess there's nobody on there, correct? To introduce? No, no. I'm going to introduce the board members out of the present tonight. Is on my left is uh, Kevin Bernardo, board member. On my right is Mrs. Barbara Catavia, board member. Myself, Tom Pyers. And I'll recognize everybody. Todd Pilling, health agent on my left. Office manager, Rosalind Grossi. To my right is uh, Newly appointed town nurse, Nicole Mello, and our animal control officer, Mrs. Stacy Ferry. Uh, we'll start the order of business, review, discuss, and act proposed kennel regulations. I think Roz just passed out. Um, everything that we're going to go over, and it shouldn't take too, too long. Um, three of these are only amendments to what has already been approved by town council and approved by this board and is an existing regulation. So if we go to the first page, which it would be the big A with the circle on it, I think I highlighted everything that's pertinent to what the changes were. Basically what we did on A we changed Dighton Board of Health to Dighton Town Clerk. If you look on the next page of A, you should find that. Did you get it, Barbara? Mm -hmm. yep, right. Okay. Got it. Now going to, to uh, page B, there were three areas that we removed uh, a reference to the Board of Health or the health agent. Uh, by replacing those with, in the first sentence, town clerk's office, and then on the closing, uh, instead of Todd Pilling, Dighton Board of Health, we put Mark Pacheco, Dighton Town Clerk. Uh, these have already been agreed to by uh, Mark Pacheco and myself. These, uh, he is the licensing authority for kennels, and he will be the enforcing authority along with the animal control officer for our enforcement of these regulations as we go forward. <clears throat> so on C, it's basically the same thing. You see in the second sentence, Board of Health is highlighted, and then Todd Pilling and Dighton Board of Health those are being replaced with the town clerk's office, Mark Pacheco and Dighton Town Clerk. That takes the onus off the Board of Health and puts the, put it where it should be, uh, either with the town clerk's office or his designee, depending on what the situation is. Now on D, this is the article that was it's a final draft, and this is going to be presented again at the next annual town meeting. That's on D. 
So we're not making any changes to that. I'm still waiting to hear if we're going to have to have another uh, public hearing with the planning board. Uh, Kerry thinks we do, I don't think we do, but um, it, it depends what the law says. There's so many days we have to have a public hearing prior to the annual town meeting that the article would be placed on. Um, we did it in the fall, so I'm not sure whether we have to do it again or not, but Kerry from the, on the planning board is, is checking that out. Now E, I think the first page you'll see a line through it. It says see attached. That is the final draft. Uh, this was done, actually, uh, Stacy was involved with this, with myself and, and Mark Pacheco. So uh, I don't want to read it, so if you want to take a minute to just go through it quick, and if there's any comments, questions, uh, just let me know. Everybody done? <laughs> now take a couple of minutes. Okay, what, what we're doing with this article is trying to eliminate the need uh, for an expensive hearing for those people who uh, are looking for a residential permit. Uh, it's under the zoning, a special permit is required and we can, we can issue one, but the hearing will be held by this board at no charge instead of the $750 fee, $1,000 fee, whatever it may be that the uh, zoning board would normally charge. The sign off sheet that's mentioned is a copy of it with what you received as a pass out. Uh, the sign off sheet was actually Jim Aguiar's idea, which was a good idea because uh, he makes a determination whether or not this application would need to go to our board or whether it would need to go to the planning board. But for a residential kennel, most of them will be coming to us. I think all of them probably. But, but he would be the one that verifies the zoning and decides on which direction this goes. Stacy, any comments? Well, let's just On the sign-off sheet? No, this is on seven on the new regulations for the new residential kennels. For what page? It's E. 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 It's number seven. Number seven. I think the zoning boards, are, the reason that's on there is they're acknowledging that the Zoning Board of Appeals does not have to have a hearing. I, I would agree with you that we should take it off and make it simpler. Mm. But yeah, because Jim's representing. Yeah. I know that. Yeah, that. yeah. You can take mine. But. No, I have oh, this I don't have the yeah. sure. I guess my comment is, I just saw this this today. I'd really like it to be tabled so we can sit down with Mark Pacheco, either the chief or the lieutenant all the people that are involved in this so we can get a consensus because I really haven't been able to really look it over. I did see that and I thought, well, I thought we were taking it out of their hands. That's why we were doing this whole new thing. So. Well, the reason for 
the zoning enforcement officer. I have no problem with the zoning enforcement okay. officer. So you I have a problem that. basically with the with, well, I sign have, off for the zoning. I have board. a problem with not seeing this until today. That's my biggest problem. I, I, have to agree. I just saw this today. Me too. I just and I think it should be tabled until next month. So or whenever we can all meet together and discuss it because I really wasn't as involved in this as I should have been. And well, you were involved in the beginning, and it hasn't beginning, changed a whole it, lot. It has changed, so I think I should have been there in the discussions, and I haven't been. So I think so we can all really look at it and make sure it passes. I don't want to come to town meeting again and it failing again. I want it to pass. Well, this has nothing to do with passing or failing at town meeting because the well, regulations. It, it does because why it failed at the, the fall one was because there was no regulations. People are going to ask for the regulations. Like, what do you, well, what to do you want to plan? see changes on this? I would like to move this along. Well, I really, as I said, I saw this for the first time today. I need to really sit and mull it over. I have a coffee, okay. thank you. Um, mull it over, and where I got it was from the town clerk, because nobody in your office had it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I... Yeah, you, you should have gotten it from the town clerk, because he's the one that wrote this. Now, if you have a discussion with the town clerk, as you should have had, I did. you would have had this information. I did prior. have a discussion more than once. And he first he said to me, you need to get it from Tom Pius. And I came over here, and nobody had it. So I, I went back to him. Just for the record, it. I shouldn't even be involved with this. OK, so this is another thing. I don't know where it belongs then. It belongs with the police department and you. It does. I don't think it does because well, I think it does. The kennel goes under um, animal inspector. That's what I've been told. So I don't think the kennel bylaw has anything to do with the police department. And if it does, they should have some kind of input on the regulations and how we're going. That's to why we them. invited them tonight and where they are. Be now Sean we can't have any input from the police department. Well, you know, everybody makes excuses, but nobody wants to do the work. I'm not making so. excuses. I'm just asking for it to be tabled so I can see it, so we can talk about it again. Well, we are talking about it, and I'd like to get your comments now. Well, you have to two see board what members that haven't seen it either. Are going to be. Mr. 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 Chairman, if I can interject, um, I got this in an email today. I think it was. I haven't sent it because I. Todd, you sent it. Right? Email. It wasn't me. Oh, yes, it was. You scanned. You were, I scanned it in the. I got an email right. today, so I didn't get to read it. Obviously. When I got home from work, I, I, then I noticed it. So myself, I'd like to just get a grasp of it because it says here that it's Dighton regulations for Dighton Board of Health, right? And then we hmm. have the hearings here. Where the, are you now? The, I'm just reading what the front page says. Okay. It's the Dighton regulations, uh, Board of Health regulations. And then we have the hearings here but then the enforcement officer is the town clerk. That's well, the town clerk has to give out the licenses. That's by law. That yeah, how is he the enforcement? So what happens? Right, I, I know. If a violation occurs, then you go, you go to the town clerk, and the town clerk issues you a citation no, and I collects don't. the money? I'm no. control. I, I That's her job. citations. But when you pay a citation, you, you have pay to pay at the town clerk. Right. I always thought you couldn't pay. Like, when I, when I give a citation... You pay, you don't go directly to the board of health and say, right. here's, your, here's your fine. Right. You go to the town clerk and they, they, they take the money. Now the town clerk's going to issue the fine? You pay the town clerk? How's the, how's the, uh, animal how's control the hearing the, on that? The animal you, control will so issue the fine. You, you appeal to him again? It makes no sense. It really doesn't. It should be, if it's a regulation from the board of health, then it should go through the board of health. Like a food regulation, we, we issue are, the, the fine. The reason it's coming through us, as I said before, is to save the people money, and also. How many how many people are we saving money? How many people do have this? A lot. A lot. I have I have I had five or six people come to me last year looking for a new kennel, and it was the new regulation, and they went to Carrie and talked to her, and once they heard how much it was going to be. They disappeared. So, um, I want people. I, I want people to be compliant. But I think it has to be collectively because it right. looks like our department, out of every, or maybe just Tom, is the only one that's saying, "Hey, I'd like to save some people some money." But nobody else cares. Nah, it's not just me. Then why aren't these people here? 
speaking up. Well, because it's, it was only on our agenda. It wasn't posted. As it's a for our discussion. Why, why are we losing all the time in uh, town meeting? Why is this always failing? Well, this last, this last time it failed because somebody got up and says, where are the regulations? We want to see the regulations. And there was no regulations written. So then it, def it was defeated. I just want to know how you want to change this. This is what the intent of this meeting is for. I think the, the folks that are supposed to be involved in all these things should have a say. Should make public comments. Well, that Even if they can't be here, right. make a public comment. And then we all read the comments and hash it up. But to just um, say, oh, um, the ones that are going to be involved are these folks. But they're not even here to say, I'll be involved. Are they going to be involved or not? Or is it going to be just this office rejecting and approving? Once these regulations are in place, this office is done with this. No, it's not. If they come to here. Right. That's what it says. It comes, it they're comes not going to go come out. here. They go to the animal control office. No, Complaint, it has to be approved at some point by the Board of Health. So it has to come to the this office. The procedure is to come before here, right? Yes. yes. Well, I know we're probably not going to be here next year. come here for the hearing. They don't come here for a fine. They'll come here for the hearing, the original right. hearing. Well, you know, which... Do you have a problem with people coming here to us for a hearing versus... But it says not just us, other folks, right? Well, it's got to go through Jim, the zoning enforcer. Then it has to go through me. Then supposedly it's supposed to go through the Board of Health, and then at the end, the town clerk can issue the license. At some point, if somebody says no for whatever reason, then we have a problem because nine times out of ten, these people already have four dogs in their house, just living in their house. Nobody knows it, it's their own personal thing. And now, if for some reason somebody says, I don't want them to have that kind of license. Who's going to tell them they can't have their dogs? I'll go on record saying it's not going to be me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Dogs are people's family, and I'm not going to tell somebody they can't have four dogs. And the only reason they have to get a kennel license in that aspect is because they have four or more dogs. It's not because they have an outside kennel. We've got to put that. I think we have to put the word kennel out of our mind. Yes, you're thinking outside. You're thinking outside, you know, barking, barking, and, barking and stuff like that. And that's not... 95% of our kennels in this town. I think we're off track here. Does anybody have any comments that they want to change in this regulation that was written by the town clerk and myself? Well, this is the I, purpose I think, tonight. I think it's very unfair. I just got this 15 minutes ago. You want me to sit here and read this now? We can table it. Then let's table it. Because it might be, because I know a lot of work was put into this, and I, I it's probably great. But I'm just trying to understand it, and I actually really feel rushed. So that's why I want to—I want to be able to digest it, ask the questions, and then maybe we can talk about it. Next. Yeah. Um, I just want to say these regulations that um, you go to was an E, and it says Town of Dighton regulation relative to kennels, and it goes on to we'll call it the uh, the legal end of it. But there's nothing in here that says anything about fences or barking or leashes or. Um, We'll say the regular or running water or what you're going to do with the animal waste. I, the, the, what I consider the regulations of a kennel, not the um, the legal end of it. If that's this if I'm is saying procedural it, stuff. It's the, stuff. the this board, or who's ever issuing it, will make a decision whether they need a fence. Whether you can't discriminate because of the type of dog. No, I understand that, but is this board going to decide as each person comes in front of us that yes, you need a fence, you need an electronic fence, or a stone wall's fine, or is it this board that's going to be making those decisions on if the perimeter, whatever, is acceptable? Yeah, and, that, and that's a good point. And I guess I, I don't want to... I if think if they come the here court, and they got 10 dogs on a quarter acre lot, that's kind of a lot. Were the town people asking for procedure regulations or regulation regulations? I... I not sure. They said, "What? Where are the regulations?" Because in the in the thing, are right. they asking for the whole thing, or were they just saying, "What's the procedure?" This is, a, this is a procedure. We have it to is. have laws to no, go regulation. by. Because where it says, and what they said on the town meeting is that the Board of Health and Animal Control Officer, it does say, approved by the Board of Health and Animal Control Officer shall inspect yearly, annually. The Board of Health shall uh, make regulations governing said process. So. 
or approving and inspecting is what the what we will want to put out as a town as a bylaw change. Yeah, it actually says so. It doesn't really say if like it says that the enforcement officer would be town clerk. Well, what are they? What, what, what would the violations would be? Right? It doesn't say any kind of violations. That's up to the animal control to figure out what the violation is. You have is. to make regulations, and real regulations. It sounds like it. It's so, yeah, so it says like this, the enforcement person is this. But what did you, what is he enforcing? There's no teeth to this. All of this is a procedure. Now that I'm reading it more. That's what it's supposed to be. Then change it to a procedure and then now make regulations. Try, yeah, I told him that. See the, see the first page? You may want to think about adding this to town procedural manual instead of being a regulation. Uh, the licensing authority wanted it as a regulation. I am not the licensing authority. We are not the licensing authority. Um, you know, if you want to table the whole thing, that's fine. I'm done working on it. Well, I think we need to know if we're going to be tabling it. I think we need to know what, what it is we Well, going I think the animal control officer is going to get together with, with Mark Pacheco and find out exactly what's going to be presented because I spent hours upon hours with your involvement in the beginning. In the beginning, but I haven't had any. It hasn't since changed that much. Well, it has changed. You're crying has. over there that you weren't involved. I'm not You crying. were involved. I, I, I think her moving forward, if she gave us input on what should be in a regulation, meaning like, what Good do you luck. consist a violation? Like, like he brought up a fence. Mm -hmm. would a, that would be wonderful. I'll wait for it. Yeah. But I'm just saying, because this doesn't, this, this, you did good work, but this is a procedure. We're looking for regulations, I think. Because if she goes out and finds somebody for not having a fence, they're going to be like, well, there's no regulation for a yeah. fence. Because this just says a, a hearing will take place. But it doesn't have to say fence. It can just say control for the animals as determined by the Board of Health at the meeting. And I just, I, I, I know what's going to happen. She's going to try and give somebody a fine and she's not going to be able to. So I, I, she needs to know what she's enforcing. But I think you can come up with those regulations for what a kennel needs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That you're going to want to see. Right now, put it this way: somebody comes in and they go like this. I like a kennel, and they go, "All right, here's your application. All right, so just so you know, it's less money, and the town clerk's going to issue the license. Don't break any of the rules. What are the rules? Oh, we haven't made them. We haven't made them up yet. But no, but, this is but excellent. The town clerk will issue a though. fine if you do. What's, what? Is, uh, it makes no sense. But I said this is excellent for the procedures and, and the laws behind it. But yeah, I think it needs the, the actual regs that she has to enforce day to day with you her. You should enforcement. brainstorm with your experience what you see, what, what a violation would be. And all collectively, we say yes, fencing, uh, whatever it is. Um, then you put those into proposed regulations, and then we go through that process of public hearings. And going from there. Okay, is there a motion to table until we get those proposed regulations in the office? So, oh, and I, can I address the board before you do? Excuse me? Can I address the board before you table it, please? Sure. So, a couple things. This is what you call healthy debate, right? But the problem is, we need something. The clerk has made a priority to make sure that kennels are licensed. I think kennels have been treated haphazardly for many years in this town. And I've been a direct result of it through zoning enforcement to deal with it. We also don't have to be reminded of a tragedy that happened in this town, okay? That I myself had to get involved through my office to try to deal with. I shouldn't have to deal with kennels, but I did. So we need to take this, this charge before you. Let's not kick the can down the road. Let's deal with it. Let's get special meetings. Let's get the workshops. Let's get this figured out. Let's get all the people in the room and get this sorted out. Bring it to the taxpayer. I don't blame the taxpayers for not voting on it last time without a right. Let's get our act together. Let's get it done. Tom, you worked a lot on this. We appreciate it. You did. We just need to fine tune it. You need to be involved. Police need to be involved. The clerk needs to be involved. We all need to be involved. I'm not going to do what I did on that Maple Road again. It's not going to happen. Yeah, I agree. If we get the parties of all and I And I'm done working on things that I have no obligation to work on because I'm such a nice person and want to help out. Those days are gone. 
But I agree. If we want to table this, we'll table this until the regulations come in from animal control and town clerk. Well, if you want to table it, do you want to just put it on for our next meeting so we have a date certain here instead of tabling it until we, you know what I mean? It's, it's it up should to you. be tabled to our next meeting. Yeah. Oh, just to the next meeting. Okay, I didn't want to make it until whenever she did the regs and then it could be three months from now. I want to make sure we keep this well, moving it now. Go on the town warrant. That's why I want, I want to make it happen at the next meeting, not at some point in the future. It needs to go on the town warrant for this year. When's the date for that? Do we know? Probably the end of May, beginning of June. Okay, so the, the next meeting will There's be okay. Of time. Okay. Mr. I'm Chair, sure the animal control to... officer can get together with the police department and town clerk to get this done, so. Yeah, in the beginning, you have to start working on the regulations pop. You know, like we have for everything else, the lease law and everything else. I agree you with you. You shall not, you shall, whatever it is. Right. Any owner of a property shall things that spell it up and then we have to look at it and say does this make sense is it you know is, is it going to work i agree with you that most of this is procedural yeah and you didn't really oh, and it's, and it's it, it, should, it outlines the procedure but then in the end we don't have something to it's not a real regulation you're right absolutely but no this is excellent uh this is very well written so is there a motion to table so moved until our next meeting Okay, motion's made by Mr. Bernardo to table item number 3A the, to act on the proposed kind of regulations, seconded by Mrs. Katabia. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Mr. Katabia? Aye. Uh, Mr. Pyers, also an aye. Table to our next meeting, whenever that may be. Next item is we're pushing 45 minutes. <coughs> 3B, rabies clinic. Um, I believe the rabies clinic has been scheduled. I know the date, but I don't know the time. From May 21st, which is a Saturday. Uh, I don't know what the prices are this year either, if they've gone up. I can give you that information. You have information? Um, Dr. Bruzzi approved the May Saturday, May 21st, date uh, 3 to 4 p.m. It's $20 cash for each um, rabies vaccination, and the town clerk will be there to license town of Dighton dogs. Uh, previously, we've had people from other towns to come in, and they can come in and get the rabies vaccinations, but he can't license other towns' dogs. So. Um, yeah. We have sent that off to Dr. Bruzzi um, to proof the notification, and then it will be going out to the town clerk for. So that again, that's Monday, May twenty first, three to four p.m. Saturday. 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 <laughs> Saturday. Saturday, May twenty first, three to four p.m. Twenty dollars cash, correct? Correct. And you at can, the tr uh, transfer station. You can also it's at the oh, transfer I station. Sorry. At the animal, animal shelter. Eight thirty five Tremont. Is so it's that 821. It? What is it? 821. 821 Tremont. Um, now, is he accepting checks and cash for the licensing, or we don't know? Licensing is just check. Okay, licensing will be just check. Moving on to 3C. Review, discuss, and act, schedule public hearing for our proposed septic regulations. And I think I'll take D with it. Review, discuss, and act, schedule public hearing for our proposed body art regulations. Um, probably should be soon, and does anyone feel it should be an off night? or? Get it, get it done within a regular meeting night. You can do it before the meeting. So you open up the hearing first. The way it works is you open up the hearing and then anyone, you know, you, you discuss it, or you read it out, and then you ask the, the audience if they have any comments. And so what time are you thinking? You could do it at six, and then right after the meeting, close that meeting, close okay. the public hearing, Open up a new meeting. 
open up a regular board of health meeting. That's fine with me. Yeah. Do you I want agree. to do them both at the uh, same meeting? I agree. Public hearing is six, then open the regular meeting. For the, yeah, for the septic regulations, anything with septic and water, sewer and water, you have to post it in the paper. Two consecutive weeks, I can give you the language on that. Yes, that please. That has to be done. And it's two separate postings? Two, like, yeah. I'll give you the language on like that. Like a week apart, so, yep. But the, the regular one should be should be posted too. It's a recommended. Mm. Okay. Right, but so it doesn't- So if you want to put it in the paper, you can put it at the same time. But it doesn't need to be twice, just once for the body yeah. art. But the, but the, set, the way the regs read on the water and the um, sewer has to be. Uh, if you're going to put it in the paper, just put both. You're already paying. You don't have to put the whole thing and just say that. Um, and we could talk about it. Yeah, the full regs sure. will be available at. Regs are, the proposed regs are available, uh, whatever it is. At, at our at office, the on the website. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can forward me the language. Yeah. I don't think we have time for that uh, on our March meeting. Do you? No, I don't think no. What do we do for April? So, I apologize. I missed the last couple of meetings. So, the septic regs, we had discussed that we needed to bring in installers and engineers. Yeah, I was yes, we're still for doing April, that. I think. Yeah, we have to. Yeah. Okay, so April for that. We're talking about the kennels at the next meeting, too. That's March. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's March. We're talking April for septic. Right. So, yes. I, I agree you should put it off. You're not going to get it all done in one night. Well, so hopefully we'll get the regulations in when you a week or so, and we can put that on our right. March meeting. Right. But weren't we going to have the engineers and the installers at the workshop to draft the regs or just to the hearing itself? Well, we did the works. We did well, the works. We were going to invite them to the hearing. They can, we can still change the regs at the, the meeting. Okay. So once so. you have the date of the hearing and it's posted, then you can do a blast email to these, because you have all these mm -hmm. people that are licensed with you for the Title V, and a lot of these engineers that work with you, you can just say, hey, just FYI, this, unless you want to send a letter to you, so on. you say, there is a public meeting on the new, uh, that you propose yeah. regulations. Okay. Same thing with Barrio. We have the one establishment, but post it. And, and give them, obviously, the regs and let them know the date. The proposed so, regs yeah. again, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So if that happened in April, when would they be implemented? What's the process? That's what we could find out. We could say, we leave that last sentence blank and say, to be effective July mm -hmm. 1st, whatever it is. It would be a couple yeah. months of like here and then it would yeah go to the attorney general or whatever I'm assuming for them to approve it or is it? Yeah, yeah, that's a good point because we ha what happens is once it's approved, then we have the uh, town clerk test it, send it off to the state, that's it. I think DEP has DEP, to approve DEP, yeah, DEP yeah. has to approve it. From my understanding. So you're probably it's looking about July 1st, the, the one they it's would approved. go and move back. Probably be May before it's finalized or June. Be good to get it to them before town meetings in case anything goes to them from town meetings in June. Hopefully. Raj, you all set? Yep, thank you. Timeline and stuff? Mm hmm. Okay. Any questions, Barbara? When would our meeting be in April? Mm -hmm. This way we, we get the thing planned out. We're not rushing. We have the we have the public hearing. We can probably do the public the other public hearing first. We could do the March one if we wanted to. Body hour one. The one in March. The one in April. So it's March tenth and then April fourteenth. Wanna do it that way? We wanna do the body art in March? Yeah. Public hearing in March and uh, the the April one? I'd say body art, I don't think we're going to have a ton of public input. We're just going to probably have the one establishment come in, I would think. But I'm up, it's up you to you. You'll guys. have the language by Monday, all right? Okay. So is that a motion? Did we have a motion? Or does no, it matter? Not yet. Do we need a motion? Yeah, so I think. As long as we have the kennel regulations in order and 
pretty much ready for presentation. I think we should be good with the bylaw for town meeting just in case it doesn't happen by then. Um, you know, I, I think, well, the regulations don't get presented at town meeting anyway, but I, I will read them and I will read them at the public hearing. But uh, I suppose there'll be a lot of opposition, but what's new? <laughs> No, so, all right, review, discuss, and act, retract, annual report. That's your, uh, your, yep. that's yours, huh? So this is our annual uh, reporting to DEP for our solid waste, for our recycling, um, that kind of stuff. It's due by February 15th every year, so all year long we track the tonnages of trash, recycling, etc. Um, I've completed the report. I just needed a, a bi-recycled statement by the town or whatever. Once I file this, then I get to file how much we've been spending out of our grant money. We've received a total of like 15 grand total from them. We just got to check what this week for $4,800. So, but out of the 11 or 10 grand that we've got, we spent almost all of it. So we're doing well with spending the money we get. Once I file this, then I can apply for grant money for this year. So, um, it's I say I was waiting for one, one more thing that I need from the town administrator, which I'll have by Monday and we'll be good to go. Thanks for staying on top of that. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice having a calendar. You can put it in like a month in yeah. advance that it's due. So, <laughs> but yes, tracking it every month made it a lot easier. When I first got here, it was going through all the slips and adding them all up. So it's just easier. That's it. That's it. Anybody have any questions? Okay, moving on to 3G. Review, discuss, and act propane tank reclamation acceptance. Um, Nope, you skipped one. A couple of months back, we talked about propane tank acceptance. And I, and I guess it's difficult for, or it has been difficult. Uh, our acceptance of these things because, number one, we need to empty them. And number two, we need to take the uh, thingy off the top, whatever you call that. No. The valve, yes, and uh, then the hole has to be drilled in it so it can't be refilled. So Tom Ferry had asked uh, a couple of months back about uh, ceasing the acceptance of these. I did some research and there's not a whole lot of places that uh, you can get rid of these things, but I did find one that uh, Blue Rhino, all their locations within uh, any, any surrounding city, if you just leave the tank off, you don't even have to buy a new one. You can just leave the tank off. That includes the little one pounders, 20 pounders, which is the norm out there, I think. So I, he did say we could, Accept them at hazardous waste day. Now, we charge $10 a piece for a propane tank. And that's about the average going price from one of our household hazardous waste people. So, do we want to not accept them at all or collect $10? at the household hazardous waste day for propane tanks. <coughs> Jim. So I'm not questioning Tom because he's an extremely competent individual. We can't accept him now. He's asking us to cease, but we can accept him on hazardous waste day. What are we doing on that day with them differently than we would any other day? Is there a place that we bring them that will take We them? store them. We store them. Yep. And then what are we doing? We have someone used to take the metal. I'm not quite sure what's going on now. But the problem is we're not sure if there's propane in them. Yeah, right. yeah correct. And that's stopped. why storing them is problematic. So that's an issue. Yeah, you need to reclaim the, the propane. I say send them to Blue Rhino and cease taking them in. That's even on, my, that's my old even on household has this waste Absolutely. day? Absolutely. What are we doing? They take them with them. They take them with them. Who does? But the what people, the company that does the household. That's what I just asked. Yeah, but at the transfer station, we store them for the whole year. No, no, that's what he asked. That's so what I asked. On hazardous waste day, they take it away that day? Yeah. 
So we're gonna, at, on that day, everything else is free. They're going to drop it off. But we're going to collect $10 from what they got. Okay, well, that's simple. If, yeah. they, if we collect the money, we take them, we don't have to store them, and they take them, then yeah, let's, let's yeah. give that service to the townspeople and collect the revenue. It's no if they have to sit there for a whole year, we shouldn't be sitting on them. No. Yeah, yeah that's a, if they're willing to do that. I was going to go ask Lynn's Propane if they reclaim the gas and if they would be interested, which I didn't get there. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I think our best bet at this point, in my opinion, bring your stuff to Blue Rhino and we won't be accepting. I don't know how you feel about that. Well, if they took it at the hazardous waste day, we can't even get a vendor to come into it. So really. Well, I mean, we're giving them an alternative what to do with them by saying blue rhino, so it's not like we're saying we don't want them, we don't care what you do with them. And I think that's the best option, just give them the alternative and then hazardous guy, fine, whatever, we eventually have it. If yeah. you have a vendor that is, is committed to taking them off of our hands and we don't have to store them, then yeah, of course you yeah. want to offer that service to the townspeople, but you don't even have a vendor right now, right? Yeah, yeah so we could say, yeah, we could say, hey, mm -hmm. here's another place you can go, and then exactly. when we finally, have a hazardous waste day, and the vendor says, yeah, I'll, I'll do this part of it, then we can include that as part of the flyer and saying, in addition, if you have propane tanks, 10 bucks. Only that day. Only that day. Because we don't have anybody, so we can't even offer it. We don't even know if the person will do it. Hazardous waste. Right, waste. two of them have gotten back to me and said they're not taking any, um, or bidding any jobs for this year. Not even bidding. So we may not even have one. Right. So who's gonna collect the money at household hazardous waste day or are we doing it for free? No. Well, I would say right now we just tell them folks, we're not taking it. Go to go to Blue Rhino, there's an option. Yeah. And then when we finally nail down hazardous waste day. If a vendor says, I will do this service for you, and we figure out the price, we'll just say to the residents at that time, it's going to be this if you want to get rid of it that day. But right now, we can't offer that. We don't even have a vendor, so I wouldn't take anything. It's a hazard. And I think maybe there should be a, a sign at the transfer station saying that so when people do go in, they know ahead of time that they don't have to ask the person that's there and put them there. Precarious position That's of explaining suggestion. it. Great suggestion. Um, so when the board voted a few months ago to not take propane tanks anymore, we put signage up there and we changed it on the website for the uh, what's acceptable at the transfer station. Yeah, we also have a flyer that we could hand out as people come in. So. And suggest because then what are they going to be doing with them? Throwing them off the side of the road. Yeah. So well, that's, we, what, that's what happens. This is what I mean. If we do say there's an option, Blue Rhino, that they can drop them off at no charge. Yeah, and I think... Let me get that word out to the folks at the transfer station. Mm -hmm. I think at this point, most people have changed their tanks over to the appropriate tanks with the correct valve on it. So... Okay, so we want to make a motion to not accept propane tanks except for hazardous waste day? So moved. I second that motion. Okay, motion is made and seconded to uh, prohibit the acceptance of propane tanks other than hazardous waste day. Uh, any further discussion from anyone? No. Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Mr. Bernardo is an aye. Mr. Batavia is an aye. Tom Pyers is an aye. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, you skipped over 3F. Excuse me? You skipped over 3F. Schedule bulky item pickup week. Okay. All right, so. Do we have a plan on that? We do. So we looked at our schedule. So bulky item pickup week is the one week a year that we collect bulky items curbside. So people, instead of having to bring them to the transfer station, you call our office and buy a sticker. Um, it looks like a bumper sticker that you put on whatever item it is. 
Uh, so it's a lot of phone calls the week before and the week of. So we looked at our schedules for vacations and meetings and everything else to know when we'd be around. And then we talked to the highway department for what week would work for them. And it appears the week of June 6th to the 10th would work for all parties involved. That is the week after Memorial Day. We do have a Board of Health meeting that Thursday night, but usually by Thursday night, the, the calls have kind of wrapped up because that's the end of it. Like I say, it's okay. the week before that's very busy. So. And the, oh, excuse me, the DPW is on board with that? Yeah. And uh, what's the date again? So can... Monday, June 6th through Friday, June 10th. Okay. This mirrors your uh, waste collection day. In other words, if you have, if you have a bulky item, uh, call our office for a sticker. We'll get it ready for you. And the process will be Monday through Friday, coinciding with your hazardous waste, I mean, your, your bulky item day. We've had these years past, so it's the same procedure. Any questions, please call our office. A lot of letters here, Roz. 3H capital outlay request. Um, as you recall, at one of our previous meetings, we had three recommendations to the capital outlay committee. Uh, one was for two new roll-off containers uh, for a total of $12,000 and $20,000 for an attendant building and swap shed. And then the last one was $11,000 for a point of service system at the transfer station. I did meet with the Capital Outlay Committee to discuss the three items. Uh, they wanted to prioritize it, which we did, and I'll explain how that went. The building and swap shed, uh, after discussion, is, is going to be hopefully introduced and uh, built in coordination with the, or in conjunction with, the highway department's move to the, to the transfer station. <coughs> the point of service system that we were looking for would certainly save some time and accounting and so forth. But the town is not ready for this yet until town hall itself moves into the system, which they haven't got yet. So the first year's priority is going to be the two roll-off containers for $12,000. Ours are in need of repair, and I think it's time we started looking at new ones. We could use those old ones for storage of tires. That was recommended, I think, by either you or Matt Tannis at the time. But <clears throat> to be spending $2,500 to repair a roll-off doesn't make any sense when you can buy one for five or six thousand dollars. So they're quite old and they get used quite a bit. So that's what happened with that. <coughs> okay, three I review, discuss, and act. Miha, <laughs> Title V seminar. Um, Matt, that is the Mass Environmental Health Association. Uh, you want to speak to that, Todd? Yeah, there's a uh, seminar coming up on Wednesday, March 9th in the hotel in Mansfield. And it's, I think they just came out today with what is on it, but it's about Title V and septic inspections, and it's worth, I think it's like seven credit hours or something like that. Um, we need 10 hours every two years in order to maintain our soil evaluator and system inspector license, so it's a good way to get a lot of them. Uh, for MEHA members, it's only $95 to attend, so um, it's great. Um, it's a real good way to get a lot of credits, so I'd like to go to it. So, Is that something either of you would be? I'd love to, yes. Okay. Go. I, might go, no, I might go personally on my own. Is that the normal uh, 
That's not a normal one they have. Well, that's usually at the Holiday Inn. I need five hours, though. So. I can't. I, I have five. So you need five. some hours for that? Yeah, but I'm going to go personally on my own. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so there's two members. Uh, actually, one member and uh, a health agent. So what are we talking? $95 each? Is that what you said? 95 for members. Yeah, non-members is 115 Okay. We've got that in our budget, correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. So is our motion to approve two members? Yeah, mainly because the Falmouth one, that's the three days back in that we didn't, we didn't have okay. it, so that kind of frees it up. What so date five. is that again? It's five hours is what you're going to get for SEFSI, just so you know, Kevin. They're talking about nitrogen loading, Title V inspections and failure factors, septic sand, drip irrigation, IA systems. So. I'm still debating this one. But, uh, so Wednesday. Wednesday. You're going, to, you're going to be able to go? Yes. Okay. So is there a motion to send to uh, members of the Board of Health to the MIHA? Title five seven now. I'll make that motion. Okay, motion is made by Mr. Bernardo. Is there a second? I will second it. Mrs. Catabia seconds. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, Mr. Bernardo. Aye. Mrs. Catabia. Aye. And Tom Pires also an aye. Next, <coughs> excuse me. Next item is three J. Review, discuss, and act. Mass Health Officer Association membership renewal. Um, this is something we do every year, correct? It is. Uh, it, it runs out the end of each year. But I don't know why we didn't get a, a renewal or if they just gave an extension. But the membership sixty dollars a year. So um, yeah, we need to renew it. So. Yeah, cheap enough. It's, uh, I don't think we need a motion for that. It also gets us into NACCHO. Yeah. And then you get the North discount. American something. And you get the discount for the November one. Yes. Yeah. So it's good to have. Do we need to make a motion? No, I might as well. I'll make a, I'll make a motion to uh, Pay the renewal for the uh, MHOA membership. And I second. Okay, motion made by Mr. Bernardo to uh, membership renewal. Yes. To pay the fee for the Mass MHOA Mass Health Office Association, seconded by Mrs. Catabia. All in favor? Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Mrs. Catabia? Aye. And Tom Fires, aye. Thank you. <coughs> Next item is 3K, update recommendations of the Board of Selectmen to form a solid waste committee. Um, I know we sent a letter in about three or four weeks ago recommending that. And they put us on the agenda, and that was the week I had a death in the family. Then we moved to the next week, and I was sick that week. So I would like to prepare somewhat for this. So this has been moved to their February 23rd or 24th meeting, which would be a Wednesday. Um, were you still interested in being a member of the Solid Waste Committee? He's looking at you, kid. Until June. Yeah, I'll do it until June. Yeah. Would you like to go help me make a presentation? Uh, we could talk about yeah. Okay, I'll be in touch. But I'm going to be there anyway. No, yeah. how, how can we talk? No, yeah, right. We're at 6.15. I have an appointment. So we don't have to sit there all night. Okay. I had asked for an appointment, so... Um, and Barbara, you're you're welcome to come sit there, and okay. which I think would be a good idea for you to listen to it also. Mm -hmm. you just gotta, but, I think um, you have to post us because we're both going to be there. I would think if you're all going out. That's what I'm saying. Too. Just post us as a meeting. Okay. That was the only reason I said that. Yeah, I, I know one member of the board of selectmen's on board with this at least. 
I'm not sure about the other two, um, but I'd like to be able to make a decent presentation uh, because I think it's important. A lot of communities now have solid waste committees <coughs> and it's changing daily. So, well, thank you. We'll, we'll talk. What date is that, Tom, again? Uh, Wednesday, it's on February. Wednesdays. It's the 23rd, 23rd or 24th. 23rd. 23rd. Yeah, that would be 6:15 on the 23rd. Moving on to item 3J. Now again, um, Kevin has seen this, and I, and I think uh, we've gone through it quite a bit, but. Uh, Barbara has not seen this until this evening. Uh, resident handbook of what to expect when installing, repairing, or upgrading a septic system. I, I looked through the one last week that we got. Did you go through this it? Right here? Did Ross hand it out? No. Right you haven't seen that yet, right? No, we, I just got that one tonight. Okay. I got the other one. We can table that also, I think. <coughs> this is something we can act on next week. Okay. If you don't, I yeah, think you should any, take a minute to look at it. On it if you want. Bob, I'm saying, Barbara, if you want to make some notes on it, mm -hmm. add some if you want to add comments. And then we'll Fine. Come up. And this is just an educational document, so we can change it whenever. Yeah, we, we don't need to add to it. Yep. It's not a regulation that we have to post or anything. This is just educational. No hurry on so. this one. Yep. So is there a motion to table? Item 3J. 3L. 3L. Is that an I? An L. That's an L. 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 <laughs> Alphabetically. Uh, I'll make that motion. Did you make the motion? I did. I'm oh, sorry. I'm going to turn my ear in. That's all right. And I will speak. I got to speak up, too. But Barbara, you haven't made a motion yet. I'm not a mumble. I'm not a mumble. Be good. <laughs> and I said no. Okay. Uh, motion's made and seconded to table item 3L. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Mrs. Catavia? Aye. Mr. Pires is also an aye. Just for anybody watching tonight, um, we do take our job seriously. I know that it may not look like it sometimes, but uh, we, I think we all work well together. We, we do trying. take our job very seriously. Yes. And we have disagreements, but in the end, I, I think it works out best for everyone. So, mm -hmm. um, and I want to thank you, Tom, because <coughs> you actually put a lot of work into this. So yes. Cool. Yeah. Oh, well. And it shows. Yeah, it does. So you take the effort. Everybody sees the effort. So thank you. Okay. Moving on to, well, thank you both. And moving on to inspector's reports, uh, health agent. Uh, yeah, just a couple things. Uh, number one is we, uh, way back when COVID started, we created uh, an emergency preparedness committee created a pandemic task force reopening committee that was charged with how to reopen town hall safely. Back in the day when you could only have 25% occupancies, 50% occupancies, we needed to put up plexiglass and hand sanitizer stations and such. But the, um, the use for that committee, now that everything's reopened, uh, basically there wasn't need anymore. So the emergency preparedness committee voted to disband the task force. But since the emergency prep is a subcommittee of the Board of Health, um, we're advising the Board of Health what they did. That's all. It's just an FYI. Yeah, I don't think we need to take this other than a informational document. Uh, I don't think we need to vote. No, no, it's just letting you know. So, okay. That's all. Um, so if there's anything else that comes up, such as if we want to impose a mask mandate or whatever in town, it's going to come from the Board of Health because the pandemic task force isn't around anymore. So if we decide if anybody wants to do anything relative to the pandemic. We have a nurse that obviously can weigh in on any of that if we choose okay. to go any of those routes. So, Does our town nurse have any? Wait, wait, I got one more thing. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we had a, uh, we've had a couple issues of late, one most recently, where we've had animals 
leaving their property and going on to other people's property and doing damage, et cetera. The one most recently was uh, geese that were defecating in the driveway and in the lawn, and it was getting very slippery for one of the neighbors. Um, and so I guess at this point, I'm looking for the, obviously we need, I'm being very careful here, but it's not about regulations or whatever, but I, I think some of it has to come from recommendations from the Agricultural Commission or Animal Control. And maybe the Board of Health has to implement regs on keeping your animals on your own property. Um, or, you know, because you're becoming a, a health problem at this point. The one today, there was actually a rat also. So obviously we're, we're escalating into a different category here. So, um, or the number of animals on a property too, because that sometimes causes some of the problems. We've been to a couple sites where there's been too many in a too small of a space. And I think there needs to be some kind of regulations, but I don't think the Board of Health should act in a vacuum. I think it should be coming from the Agricultural Commission as a recommendation before this board does anything. So, but it's becoming more and more prevalent in our daily day jobs. So I think something needs to be done soon from these Does rights. the so. uh, Agricultural Commission have regulations? We are, work we are t starting to work on them on Tuesday. Okay. Because this has become a problem. They know it's a problem. And so we, last meeting Tuesday is the, we're coming with all our, our own recommendations and we're going to put them all together. And, okay. And Just kind of... Then you'll see them because they have to go through the board of health. Okay. So when they make a, are they making a recommendation or are they making a regulation? I'm not sure what our board can do. I know they have to go through the board of health, so I don't know if you have to make the make vote a, on the regulation. They make like an outline. Right. I'm mm -hmm. not sure. Okay. Just want to know how that works. Yeah, you know, I guess it would have to come to us. Well, I know it has to come through you. Right. So, okay. Barbara, you want to comment on that since you're on the Ag Commission? Yeah, um, there are a lot of issues. It's not just geese. Uh, there are horses, cows, sheep, alpaca, a lot of things. And simply because they have a right to farm does not mean you can encroach on your neighbors, does not mean you can have 40 little goats in one little area. So we've got to find, we've yeah. got to find a way to enforce this and be fair to everyone, and especially the animals. What is tough is the state does not have any statues that say, you need to have an acre for a dairy cow, or mm -hmm. you need to have an acre, uh, you know, three quarters of an acre for five goats. It's just recommendations. They have no statutes, right. so it's really tough to be able to find a place to enforce before, I mean, once we make regulations, that's something different, but before that, it's really tough because I have somebody in town that has five acres and he has 50, 60 cows on the Way too many cows for five acres. He thinks it's okay. You know, so these are things that we need to put into writing that this is what you need. So... So in, no, the, no, in no. the absence of those regulations, it means more inspections by animal inspector right. and, you know, more complaints, possibly the health of the animals being suffered. And then you get to bring in MSPCA or something. It, it makes for a lot of work. So having regulations up front would make lives easier for all. Definitely. Right. Definitely. And we just, we and just house, seized, we just seized 80 goats off of somebody's property, a horse and an emu. And, you know, not only saying they have 10 acres, they have to have 10 Usable, usable acres, acres right. yeah, for these animals. Old right. and stuff. Right. Exactly. Right well, animals. goats love those little thrives yeah. and stuff. <laughs> and, and you have to do it for each, because each animal is different. Exactly. I mean, exactly. Yeah. When you guys meet again? Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday coming? Yep. Tuesday. That's what? This, yeah. Okay. Tuesday. <laughs> I'm wondering if we can get a veterinarian's input also. Do large know. animal veterinarian. Do you, do you know a large animal veterinarian? I know a few. Well, well, I know one, one but she's me. not. She's <laughs> not a. Um, we can, but as I said, it's it's very hard to enforce until we make regulations because there's no statute that the that the state puts out. It's all recommendations. We recommend. And it's tough now to to enforce because some of these places have had animals for quite a while mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're going to say hey wait a minute 
can't do this. So are we grandfathered in? No, I wouldn't think so. Not when it comes to the uh, welfare of the animal. animal. Or the neighbors. Like I said, um, right to farm does not mean you can do anything anytime. It doesn't. You still have neighbors. Yeah, you can't create a nuisance. That's why right. we have yeah. to Yes, Miss Ag, yeah. That's definitely. And are we talking about situations that potentially could be um, a detriment to the animals because of the. This blood? is what we're saying, yeah. Why do we need a regulation to deal with that? Hmm. If the animals. Someone has, to, someone has to determine if that is detrimental to the animal. That's why I was talking about veterinarians. It's, it's difficult. Go back to the kennel law again. Well, no, it, it's, it's different. It's difficult because every animal is different. And like those, those 50 cows or 60 cows on those five acres, so. it's, are they unhealthy animals? No. Do they need more space? Definitely. So how is the regulation going to do that? You're going to limit the amount of space? We're going to have to. In other words, if you move into town and you want to put a farm on, I don't know, your property and you've got less than an acre, we have regulations that say you can't do that because you need this for this animal or you can have this kind of animal on that property. That's different than, you know, they call me and I say, well, no, I don't think you can do that. And they go, well, I looked up the statues and no, and, and your bylaws and nowhere does it say that I can't do that. Okay, like Lakeville has uh, the, uh, regulations on horses. If you have one, it's on a certain amount of space. Two, and then it, it goes up to, for the max on the property, but it goes by the space. Then it starts, starts talking about paddock away from a, so it talks about paddock and it talks about um, manure away from wells. It, yeah. it, it spells it out really good. And you can't get a permit unless you um, notify the abutters, your abutters, they give you a certain amount of feet, whatever it is, and uh, everybody has that right to that hearing. So is this the type of regulation you're talking about? It could be. I'm, I mean, I am a member, but I'm a non-voting member of the Ag Commission. I'm just there too. Yeah. And what do you do with follow-up? Follow-up? Follow-up. Follow-up. Oh, follow. I thought you said follow-up. What do you do with follow-up? Follow is tough. I mean, because they don't require, I think, mass now, it's what? They just it's up just that. Increased. It's just increased. But that's for caged birds. Right. So what do you do with follow that's not caged? I would like to see all follow caged, to tell you the truth. But you can't do that. But I can't do that. So this is where we're going to have to get into how we're going to handle that because I mean we've had we've had a, it go against the town when we've tried to do that. So, but that's all stuff we're going to have to do, we're going to have to flush out. But I would love to see all fowl caged. Well, maybe not caged, but at least enclosed in their own area. Yes, and yeah. we try so to do they that. Don't stray like you don't want the dog straying or right. horses straying or cows straying. But for some reasons they fly. But for, yeah, but for some reason, oh, my chickens, I have my chickens and they have netting over the Yeah, but I can't do that. No. no, there are ways to do it. There are ways to do it, but the town asked one person in town to do that and we got the judgment against us. So yeah, you need to be careful. we need to be careful. I can't remember on that one. I'm not, I'm not there anymore. But if I send you just that yep. online, I send it to you, you can just yep. take a look. Maybe in your meetings, yep. if that conversation comes up. Yep. It's just an idea. You can nope, see the please. size that they have. Because it works really good. Mm -hmm. you know, sometimes the neighbor would say, oh, I really don't want that. And in the end, they were like, I have a problem with it. Right. So I love these horses. Right. Because they were, it was maintained properly. They didn't just, they didn't just throw it against the wall and see if it was stuck. Yeah. Well, I'm very much <laughs> looking forward to seeing what the Agricultural Commission recommends to the Board of Health. <laughs> Regulations only work if you enforce them. Yes. I don't. I don't see why we. The state recommends and they don't have any guidelines, just the recommendations. Uh, most things with the state you can't uh, re be more restrictive. I mean, less restrictive, but you can state. be more restrictive. So why can't we create? Uh, 
regulations that govern all these animals from the recommendations of the state. You can't, if there's none, you can't. But, put, it, put it this way. No. From my understanding, um, when you make a regulation, it has to be reasonable, and then it has to be enforceable. Right. You can't just make it in some cases. That's, that's not even possible. And then you have to be able to enforce it. And then you have to send it for ratification to make sure it doesn't conflict with your right to farm and mass general law allowances under 48. Well, I think the right to farm statute was created for real farmers. Not farmers. Commercial not farmers. farmers. Oh yes, Commercial. that's exactly what the right to farm is so, for. And, and people just took it and ran with it and yep. said, I have a right to do this and I have a right to do that. And it was basically for commercial farmers. I mean, I have a place in town, I know there's over 300 birds on acre, maybe an acre of land if that. And we've yet to figure out a way to control it or regulate it. So um, hopefully that'll happen soon. So we'll see. Okay. That's the other thing. Are these birds vaccinated? I no, think the no. state law is in there. Not um, chickens. They'll come out and they'll test chickens, but they won't come out and test geese or anything like that. Okay, that's what I mean. Yeah. Just, just chickens and. Because so if you have, you can birds you have to vaccinate. They're not. Is that trace? There are vaccinations, but they come out and test to make sure that they're healthy and that kind of stuff, and they do it for free. Um, matter of fact, any time I went to a barn that or a place, except for Barbara's, because I know hers are healthy, but um, I did. Let them Thank know. you. Well, I did let them know, and you know there's testing out yeah. there, but I did let them know that the state will test for them and will come out and do that. That was one of the things they asked us to do this year. So. Down there through for it, <laughs> please. Um, okay, I'll start with COVID. Um, from January 31st to February 2nd, we had 20 cases, which is substantially lower than about five weeks ago when we were at 145. So, I mean, we're going down each week, it's going down. I think it was at 145, 92, 77, 31, now we're at 20. So hopefully we keep on that trajectory. Um, we have some changes in the schools um, this week and we didn't get to hear a whole update on it because we had our meeting canceled, but they started the students doing the at-home testing. You could opt in. They got tests. They could test themselves at home. They started the previous week with the teachers. I think it was 300 and something students um, that had opt into it. Um, I don't know how that ended up going because we didn't have our nurses meeting this week. Um, and also, as many know, um, the commissioner is going to be ending the mask mandate for schools um, at the end of this month, 228. Um, so that will end as well. Um, the contact tracer, she's still doing great. I mean, she's averaging a lot less cases. I would say about five daily. Um, and then we've had a couple of days where she didn't have any. Um, so it's definitely going down. Um, I had a MAVEN webinar last week on tuberculosis, um, the evaluation of a person with class AB um, condition. All I can say out of that is I hope that I don't have anyone because <laughs> It's a lot of work. It's like six months of monitoring someone. Um, so it's hopefully we're not we're not in a place that that's going to happen. Um, I completed and submitted my application for the Massachusetts Association of Public Health Nurse. Um, I'm excited about that. I already have a webinar next week um, on Lyme disease, so that should be informative. And that's all I have. Could the uh, contact tracer? help you with data input or is Maven qualified? No, and that's one of my things also. I am almost up to date with my data input. So, oh, good. Yeah. Right. It's, um, I actually 
I no longer am at my other job on Tuesdays. I've stepped away from there to work on my data input, and then I'm also in school. So yeah, you should be um, able to keep up with that now. I think. Yeah. So and now that we're the cases are being down, once I get caught up from when we had that huge surge, um, it won't be a problem. Yeah, I think. I think sooner or later, probably sooner than later, we're going to not be contact tracing and doing all this data input. What do you think? Yeah, well, they already announced this week that they're taking COVID off the immediate list in Maven. Um, I think they just don't want to tell us that you did you listen to the Maven webinar. So they're taking it out of the immediate workflow, um, but they're just not coming out and saying like, you don't have to call anyone. They're just saying, call who you feel like needs to be called. Um, and that it's on the town who they decide needs to be called. Um, okay. So, Very good. at yeah. some point we'll have to have a discussion about where we're mm -hmm. gonna go with that because this is something that's a, like a forever thing. Um, and how long are we gonna continue to right. um, call? At some point it may be more effective to not be calling anyone and let people know that there's certain times if they wanna talk to somebody that I would be available to speak with them if they have concerns. And then people that actually need outreach could get in touch with me instead of trying to figure out who in the list maybe actually needs anything. We may be reaching out to a bunch of people that don't need anything and there's this one person that was looking for help. Um, so we'll have to see. It's never gonna go away, but I'm glad to see where we are, where we are and uh, moving forward, so um, kind of get used to it after a while, like the flu, mm -hmm. you know. You... And, and that's kind of how it's going to run for the most part is when we get into that season, it will go up, it will go down, and yeah. you kind of see like down in Florida, they're on a kind of different trajectory than us because they go inside when we're going outside. So in the summer, as we're going outside, they're going back inside because it's too hot and their numbers oh, might yeah. go up a little yeah. higher. So um, okay. we'll see how that is. You mentioned Lyme disease, so spring's right around the corner. Mm -hmm. You're probably gonna start seeing tick-borne diseases start going up. Yeah, I just had a Lyme, and I was surprised because yeah. um, I know because it's still snow. Yeah, snow but I know that they. I mean, my husband's a hunter, and he's come in from the woods in the winter and had ticks on him. I don't know how last spring we were, but I'm sure the numbers. Oh, Lyme cases? Or are we still doing it? Oh, are we still doing it? Yeah, that's, yeah. Saying, that's the next thing coming around. That and this, this mosquito. Mosquitoes, illness. right? Up, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what you guys did last year, but it, yeah. I didn't see a lot of mosquitoes. Last year, no, last year was a good year. Yeah, It was the year before. Ticks never go yeah. away, though. Little totally stinkers year round. So last year was the first year they decided to spray early in the season instead of waiting until the numbers got so high and then yeah. spraying. So they spray it early and it made a huge difference. Yeah. So Who sets that up? Is it the, the state? Oh, the state. state. Oh, okay. We just decide to opt in or opt out. Oh, okay. so. yeah, because last year was really, it was nice. Well, they're still pushing to stop the spraying. So hopefully, uh, you know. I think that would be a big problem with with the mosquito population. Okay. Thank you. Nothing, Jim. Building commission. Who's next? Animal inspector. I just have an FYI, sort of. I'll pass these out. Um, we have a kennel that we're dealing with that could become a problem. And when I was talking with this gentleman, he cited this, and I think you need to know that. He's, if we deny him, he's gonna push back. Well, this is a commercial kennel. This is a commercial kennel. And what it states is, this Middlesex judge, superior judge said that dogs, if they are held on pro a livestock property, 61A property, are considered livestock. And we can't control them from not being, having their kennels there. Because if they're breeding for um, for money for to support themselves, I didn't know dogs were considered livestock, but according to a 1993 judgment, they are in breeding. 
apparently, I guess. How many dogs? Well, right now, the kennel, the person has 14. Has 14. He's not planning on breeding, but he will continue to, he will breed if we decide that we don't want to give him a kennel license and he will cite this. It's just an FYI, so we're all prepared that it could be coming down the road. What breed does he have, you said? I didn't say what he had. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was missing. I was trying to read and listen no, and, you know. No, I didn't say what kind of dogs he had. Couldn't this be alleviated by what you want to propose by making regulations with the animals and how the property This is, is a commercial stuff? kennel. Oh, so that wouldn't and it's And if he's on um, property that's under, what is it, 61A, Barbara? Yes. 61A, that he has the right to breed dogs on that property if he's making, because they're considered livestock, and 61A is farmland. Oh, we had the thing for residential, right? Yeah. Right. So I guess we just do our own thing with residential, and then you just, somebody does the homework to see. Yeah, I just, I, is, right, right. I know he's gonna, I know he's gonna, okay, right, push back. This, every time I talk to him, this is what I get. Yeah, well, you know, the spring, you know, this, so I just wanted to give you a heads up that yeah. this is something that's yeah, coming down the line. Right. Well, well I found this article. The commission's working on this. Not, not the dogs. You can, can you ask that question? Maybe there's some expertise there. You will if it becomes livestock. Well, if it becomes livestock, if he's breeding, I guess we would. But dogs fall, don't usually fall. <laughs> See, this is what I'm, I was confused about. Case, but law, was, case law is always specific. If case law was going to change legislation, we would have already happened. This, this was the night before. Right. So, the, well, and then again in 21. So the only way I'm going to take that and make the paper worth anything more than what it is, is if the case law is specific to the situation you're having. Right, and I, I understand that, but I'm just, I, I just wanted people to have the heads up that this is out there, because I had never heard of it until they mentioned it and I looked it up. So I just wanted you guys to have a heads up that this is out there and. We don't have anything different though, right? We just, we're actually just trying to do residential right now. We're trying to do residential, but I do believe he's trying to get a residential, not that, he wants to get a residential permit, which oh. a kennel license, which is there's other things that go along with that. No, that he can't. A, if but we have residential regulations that spell a residential, then you have to do something different, right? It's well, clearly a court if judge he's, too. If he's selling, it should be under commercial. Right. Right now, he's not selling. What I was told was that he would, if that would mean that he could have a kennel license. I'm right. just, I'm just putting it out there. That's all. Well, oh, you can have this copy. I, I will, um, I can just print it off my... Judges have been known to make bad decisions, so... Oh, think so? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anything else? That's it. Thank you very much. Any public input? It's off the internet, so it must be true. <laughs> this is WC, oh, yeah. uh, WC, uh, Channel 5. Channel 5 is where I got it from. I'll have to research that now. <laughs> when did you formally become a member? Pardon? When did you officially become a member? At the beginning of the Agricultural Commission? No, this board. Like January 19th or something? Yeah. January what? January 19th, maybe? Yeah. All right, so you... You don't need to act on. Yeah, because we had our meeting on the 13th, but she was right. appointed on the 19th. After so it was that. probably the Thursday, the 20th, when she became an official member. Okay, there's four minutes, four, di four days of minutes uh, that need approval. Uh, Mrs. Katavia was not here for October 25. Well, she was not a voting member. October 25, December 9, and January 13th. Uh, so, Ms. Bernardo, would you make a motion to approve the minutes of October 25, December 9, 2021, and January 13th, 2022? So, uh, I'll step down and second a motion. Uh, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Mr. Pires, aye. Those pass. And we have a Get a motion to approve the minutes of January 31, 2022 special meeting. I think you were present. Yes. Okay. 
So is there a motion to? So, so yeah, you would. Oh, wait a minute. That was that the one last Monday that I wasn't at? No, it wasn't. Yeah, you were sure it was there. I wasn't there. That was the phone call one. You were, no, I, uh, you were on Zoom. I was. That present. was the real short was. one. Okay. Motion to approve. So moved. Okay. I'll step down a second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Ms. Pyers, also an aye. Uh, motion passes. And is there a motion for adjournment? Make a motion to adjourn. I second that. <laughs> Motion's made by Ms. Bernardo to adjourn the meeting, seconded by Mrs. Gatabia. Mrs. Gatabia. Uh, all those in favor, Mr. Bernardo? Aye. Mr. Gatabia? Aye. Mr. Pyers also an aye. Meeting's adjourned. Thank you, Cable. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a good weekend coming.